everybody, it's Hannah, one of the co-founders of Dream Bakes. We make gorgeous gourmet cakes, desserts and confectionery. So this is the, the video that I promised that I would talk about in my previous one. Um, if you've not seen that, go and have a look. It's about the events that are coming up for us in the next couple of days that we're attending. So yes, this is the video about my little mini bake to Paris. Um, it was very last minute um, and usually I'm very much a planner. Um, the, the person that I went to stay with, Brittany, she teases me about this, about how I book things six months in advance and how I've always got things scheduled out, um, which is true. I'm trying to be a bit better at that this year. So I, I actually booked this trip on the Monday and I was there on the Saturday. So that is very spontaneous and last minute for me. So that was really, really cool. And um, yeah, it's kind of good to sort of break out of your habits once in a while. Um, I, I flew, flew from Doncaster. And that was just so handy for me because I'm like 10 minutes from it, so it was great. And um, the plane both there and back, <laughs> it was really um, quite empty, so it was almost like I had a private jet to myself, which was fab. So um, I got there, okay, so I got there about half past 10, but it took so long to get through customs and to get just a ticket to the train that um, that, that took me a good sort of hour and a half at least to just get out of the airport, which was pretty annoying. Um, but once I'd finally got there, I went to um, to drop my luggage off at Brittany's flat and um, she lives sort of quite far east to the city. I, I can't remember what the ring road's called, but the ring road that goes around, the, around Paris, she's just outside of that. Um, and she's, she's the owner of Untamed Lifestyle and Business and she's super cool. She, she helps people sort of curate their brand story and really get down to the bare bones of what they want their, their brand to represent. So um, go and check her out, I'll put the link in the description and um, yeah, she really knows her stuff so go and have a look. And um, the first thing that we did, we, I, I sort of unpacked everything and I, we went to uh, Le But, which is so Montmartre and um, that, was, that was super cool. It was raining all day, uh, Saturday and Sunday, which was not the best, but yeah, you know, you, have to deal with the cars that you dealt with I guess. Um, so we went there and we had a look around the museum, the Musée de Montmartre and that was, that was cool, I really enjoyed that. I've been there before and they have sort of, they have permanent exhibitions and they, they also have um, like ones that switch now and again and the last time I went which was, I don't know, maybe 2009, 2008, uh, that was on Absinthe so that was really interesting but the one that they had this time um, was about cinema so it was called uh, like La Deco de Cinema or something like that. Um, and it was about all these films that had been filmed, uh, films that had been filmed, these um, films that took place and used the scenery, so like Sacre Coeur and things like that. Um, and that was really interesting. I had kind of forgotten that Amelie, which is one of my favourite films, um, was filmed there and they had loads of, loads of different sort of memorabilia, like all the posters that she used and the, um, like the little gnome photographs and stuff and they also had the clapperboard from Midnight in Paris which again like that's one of my top seven films if you've not seen it then then go and see it because I actually really enjoy it it's about how like nostalgia and yearning and and it's great and I'm not a huge fan of Owen Wilson but I actually quite like him in this film he's sort of a good everyman as it were um so we had a look around the museum that was lovely a um, little bit of a stroll around Sacre-Cœur, and uh, we we went to have uh, we went to have lunch, very late lunch. Um, what is my hair doing? Very late lunch in this little cafe, and they did these um, like book week crepes, and mine had like this mushroom and cream sauce in, and that was awesome. So it was very like northern restaurant. So that was the main, um, and then you you got like a dessert, so it was like a set menu, and. I don't exactly know why I chose to have mine with jam, like Brittany had hers with caramel and that looked a lot better than mine to be fair. <laughs> um, and then you got like a little thingy of cider as well with it so it was like a complete northern France um, menu really, it was, it was really fun. Um, and we we had some mulled wine, some vachel and <laughs> I really, I've seen with Brittany, like in England we only ever have mulled wine. Um, at Christmas, like it, it's a it's a festive Christmassy thing, um, and having it like on that sort of quite chilly, like late afternoon evening, um, in May, 
that that it was really nice um and it got me feeling quite jolly actually i don't know if it was sort of like the associations with it being nostalgic or whether it was because it's alcohol but either way i enjoyed it and it was yeah it was really nice i had some uh some mulled wine the following day actually as well so yeah good times for me um and then we um we just sort of stayed in that area and we had to we had some wine in this little bar and some camembert um and quite a strange uh i don't know whether he was homeless but this man came in and he was busking and he was like making a slight bit of nuisance to himself and we were kind of like, kind of like trying to hide our heads and not make eye contact and stuff like that he was pretty good at the, the guitar though like i will give him that um and then we we just went back and had a little bit of a bit of a chat and a and um a bit of a catch up and that that was it for the first day so the second day um i took myself to the catacombs and um, britney had some work to do so i took myself off there um super glad that i went there if you want to go go early be prepared to wait in line because i i got there they were open at 10 i got there at half nine um and i waited in line for an hour so um, i got in at half 10 so only half an hour after the open which which is okay um but i know you can be waiting for like two to three hours pretty much and um even while i was standing there by the time i got in they were queuing all the way around this square it was going to take them so long to get in um and it was raining it was cold uh i was on my own as well so i didn't even have anybody to talk to um technically i could have talked to the people behind me they were they were canadian but um i was kind of in that mood you know when you you'd rather just like listen to people talk than talk yourself um i didn't have a particularly good sleep so i i just did that as well i just listened to them talk um so that was awesome that was really cool the catacombs um it took me a good five or ten minutes to kind of get over the fact that they're all dead bodies i got in there and i was like oh my god these were once people that was a person that was a person that was a person um and it, it was super bizarre but um as i say like if you sort of don't let yourself get too freaked out then i think it should be okay for pretty much everybody there were children going down there as well i wouldn't recommend like very young children because it is a weird creepy place but you should be fine um and that was really cool and uh like the the mines underneath paris like the catacombs have sort of six million bodies inside and yet they still only take up one eight hundredth of the area of the of the limestone mines which i think is crazy um and after that i kind of i kind of carried on the theme of underground weirdness so um so i went to the ile de la cité and i went into the cryptogeologique which is uh, like underneath the pavie of uh, of Notre Dame um, and it's really cool I've never been in there before um, they they have some uh, Roman baths underneath there so that you can see all the hyper costs and stuff um, my little sister's really into like Romans and stuff at the moment so I'm going to show her that and she'll she'll really enjoy that I think um, and there was also like a former foundling hospital as well which is really cool like the buildings like oh they were so atmospheric you couldn't, couldn't sort of walk among them or anything but it was really cool and they were they were showing how uh what the ile de la cité used to look like um and uh it used to be so different like they to to make the big square in front of the cathedral they demolished sort of a hundred what was it a hundred houses and 30 streets something like that um and they were a little bit slummy in a way so it used to be completely different um and buildings used to be like right up against the cathedral so um yeah it was nothing like how it looks now um after that i i took myself to a cafe and i had this like really nice like lemon ginger infusion which really helped warm me up actually because it was still raining oh, that was annoying like the weather in paris now is so good oh my gosh like i've missed out on it was really nice before i went really nice after i went so typical i guess i brought the weather with me so um, I went to a cafe and I was just sort of uh, whiling, whiling away the hours, like people watching, um, waiting for Brittany to be finished with her work. Um, and then when she when she joined me, we went to a really nice Thai cafe, Thai restaurant, should I say. Um, I had some very nice noodles with like amazingly fresh um, exotic mushrooms, which I wasn't expecting. Um, and after that, we had a bit of a stroll, and uh, and I went in a we went in a gelato shop, and um, I had caramel 
not that exciting. Uh, speculous. Again, not super exciting, but it's one of my favourite flavours. To be honest with you, the caramel ice cream is like one of the best caramel ice creams I've ever had in my life. It was lush. It was so good. Um, can't remember the name of the gelato place, but it's on one of my photos, so I'll write it in the description bar. Um, and the last one that I had was uh, lime and basil, which was amazing. I knew it would work because I had a lime basil um, caipirinha when I was in uh, Lithuania, which was oh, one of my favourite things that I've ever that I've ever drunk, honestly. Like, oh, so good. Um, Brittany wasn't convinced about that one, but I, I made her try it and um, I think it was better than she thought it was. I don't know whether she's 100% convinced, but yeah. Um, and then after that, like she, I don't think either of us had um, that good of a night's sleep, really. Um, I had something, like I don't know if you can hear this, it was like it was going, like scratching on the window, um, which freaked me out. It was about six or seven in the morning or something and I like, it, Completely threw me. I thought, oh my god, what's trying to get inside? Um, so then we, we went back to hers and watched Midnight in Paris, um, which was really cool. It was cosy, just like, you know, cuddled up and watching a film, and that was really lovely. Um, then the next day, that was, oh, that was the day of the elections as well, um, the Monday. So um, it, was a, it was a bank holiday, and uh, like the news came through about the elections. Um, probably about two or three in the afternoon, something like that. So I'm not going to touch too much on that because I'm not going to delve into politics. But um, later in the day, it, everybody got such a really jolly and waving front French flags, and that was quite sweet. So uh, we went to a cafe, one of the few things that <laughs> was actually open, and um, <clears throat> um, just had a like a pastry, a bit of a coffee, sat there for like an hour or so, um, and then. Brittany had to do a bit of work, so I made us lunch, which was very cobbled together, but I think it was okay. Like, I did sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? Polenta. Um, with, like, sort of sautéed courgettes, leeks. Courgettes, leeks. Some other kind of vegetable I can't recall. Oh, mange too. And um, with, like, a sort of tomato-y salsa type thing that I made. Um, so a bit cobbled together, but... Yeah, it was nice. It was it was cool to share that with her because we've not cooked together in so long. Because um, we used to live together about seven years ago, Ugh, seven years ago. But yeah, we used to live together, so it was kind of cool to to have that vibe again to sort of be cooking and like in the same space together. That was sweet. Um, and then so she had to continue working after lunch. So I again I took myself off to the chocolate museum, um, and it's called Choco Story, which I'm not a huge fan of that name, but yeah. Uh, and they, they take you through the, the history of chocolate from, like, the very first uh, processing of it, so the Mayans, and then all the way through to, to modern day. Um, and it's really cool, like, I did know a lot of the uh, information before, so the, the bit about the Mayans and the Aztecs, that was, that was nothing new. But the bit sort of um, 16th century onwards, I didn't really know too much about, so it was, it was cool to see that. Um, that was really interesting. Um, and they also did a, a demonstration of making pralines and uh, a degustation of the pralines afterwards. So, again, that was a very good point for me. Um, <laughs> I re they, like, they were so fresh, these pralines. Like, he, he probably made them, I think he made them within the hour, or something like that. Um, and they were just lush. Oh my gosh. It's, it's one of those, you know, you have a free sample and it's so good. And you're like, oh, I really want another one or two of the samples. But I'm going to look really greedy if I keep going back for more. So, I didn't. I, I, I was good and um, I actually bought a, a bag for my mum in the, in the shop. Um, I don't know what her review is on that. I'll have to ask her when she gets home. Um, but I, I thought they were really good anyway. And um, gosh, the, the amount of um, like memorabilia that was in that uh, museum was really cool. They had like a free app um, with an audio guide on it as well, which gave you a bit more information than just the, uh, just the boards. Um, my one of my favourite bits though, uh, there was a, a display of cocoa beans in the foyer where where you pay for tickets and stuff, um, and they had they had a row of maybe seven or eight cocoa pods, and they are about this big, uh, and they were set on a a, a dark brown um, wooden board, and uh, oh, sorry there was I thought somebody was coming to our door then, um, yeah there was cocoa pod pods set on a a, a board. 
and some German people came in just after me and um, they asked where the cloakroom was um, but then they started hanging up their, their coats on the cocoa pods because they thought they were coat hooks which I thought was really sweet and the reception woman she was like no 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 and they started really freaking out about it and it just it made me giggle a lot <laughs> um, yeah I definitely recommend going to that museum like I, it's it, it's a good way to kind of um, fill a bit of time if a you're on your own like I was or it's raining which again it was just starting to rain again by that point super cool and um, after that I, I went to enjoy a happy hour so I had a few caipirinhas which was awesome um, my go-to drink pretty much all the time <laughs> um, and then after that I I met up with Brittany uh, in the Belleville district and, uh, and we went to this cute little cab uh, and basically they, they like these specialize uh, I know it sounds a bit dumb for France but they specialize in cheese and wine um, so you can basically like, there's a, a big counter full of cheese big counter full of wine and you can basically sort of choose which ones you want which was awesome and the wine that Brittany chose she she went up and she was like oh is this one fine and I, uh, my palate's not that good I was just like yes I don't really care but honestly it was one of the best wines that I've had for a while it was gorgeous really 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 nice um, and the cheese plate that came oh so good it was it was sort of like a cheese and charcuterie board so she had the meat I had the the cheese and the bread that, that came with it oh my god so good I was saying like there's not that it was not where I live there's not that bread culture and <laughs> and it's it's such a shame because honestly like if there were no consequences I would just nibble on bread and cheese and dips like every single day of my life because I just love like little picky bits like that um, and and you just don't get nice bread here even sort of the most mediocre uh, boulangerie is gonna serve you fairly decent bread um, God knows what French people think when they come over here, really. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so we, we had a little bit to eat, bit to drink, a um, bit more to drink. And we, we also filmed some, a, like we did a live stream, like a Facebook live stream, which was cool. Um, that's on Brittany's Facebook, Facebook page as far as I know. So go over and have a look at that. I'll try and get the link and pop it down below. And um, that was really cool. I did a video testimonial for it as well. And after I finished messing up, um, I think it turned out okay. <laughs> um, I think she she had to uh, re. I think she had to edit it mainly the part where I couldn't remember the name of her business because she she did change it. Like I'm not just being a terrible friend. Like she did change it. Um, and it was such a lovely trip. It was uh, normally when I go on a city break, um, a lot of the time I'm on my own. So to kind of maximise my time and to keep myself busy, I go. I, I sort of do nine o'clock, I'm going to be here. Then I need to take this transport at this time to this place. And then it's 10 minutes walk to this place, which is on this street. So, you know, I plan my day out. Like, it's not rigidly, but I've got a plan. <laughs> and um, yeah, to sort of take time to kind of sit and just do the French thing of like having coffee, having a little glass of wine, just sit sitting and taking everything in was lovely. And um and I I feel I feel very sad that I am not in France today. And uh, and I miss Brittany very much. Bless her. So that that was awesome. Um I definitely, definitely recommend to go to all the all the places that I went. And um I'm gonna be posting photos from that as well. So if you want to see more more photos um, and more videos, I'll probably be posting a couple of short videos that won't be necessarily good enough or long enough for YouTube. Uh, if you want to if you want to see any of those, go to my social media links in the bar. Um, subscribe and like the video if you liked it. Click the little bell to get notifications for the next video. Um, the next video will probably be something from Slow Down Sunday, which is an event I'm uh, attending on. On Sunday um, which is really really cool and there's there's gonna be a, a celebrity chef there which is quite exciting um, I always enjoy meeting uh, professional chefs so um, yeah thanks very much for watching this I'll be very impressed if you got to the end because this has turned into a lot longer of a video than I intended classic me um, but yeah come back for the next one I promise that will be shorter thanks very much guys see ya